last year, and everybody raved about it so much that we decided to make an annual event. Um, I especially want to thank Shari Johns for bringing me, uh, inviting two guests today, and then also Trudy uh, Bay for bringing the guests, and then I also brought a guest to be on the panel. So we have Rainy Zicardi, Tiffany Emerson, Trisha Macaluso, and Amy Oswald. So I'm now going to turn it over to Tommy, and I hope you enjoy. How many of you were here last year? Not, not actually here, but when we did the bridal panel. Wasn't it great? I just want to say many thanks to Kay for all of her hard work and, and pulling this together. And as you remember last year, we had kind of some ground rules that we followed by. And I just want to remind everybody what those are this year. Namely, uh, we have a wonderful panel. We're all just a little nervous, so we ask that you can give your undivided attention, please. Hold down on any talking. Secondly, they can mention any vendor that they've had a positive experience with. We've asked them not to mention anyone that they've had a negative experience with, just because everybody has their off day, right? And so, if you happen to see them outside or anything after this, please don't approach them and ask them, because we've given them some rules, and, and they have our permission to slap you if you do. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome to this year's Jerry Springer Show. <laughs> and uh, what I'd like to do, firstly, is ask our brides to uh, just tell you a little bit about them, their name, when they got married, and in one sentence to describe their wedding reception, or their wedding day, if it was trendy, if it was traditional, things like that. Rainy? My name is Rainy Zuccardi. I got married May 8th, had a reception May 19th, and my wedding was modern, chic. Very good. Tiffany? My name is Tiffany Emerson. I got married on June 30th. Um, my wedding was pretty traditional, but my reception was an all-out party. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Trisha Macaluso. I got married on April 21st. And my wedding, I guess I would say, uh, classic elegance. My name is Amy Oswald. I'm a little far removed. I got married in March of 06. I got married at uh, a very small, intimate destination wedding, turned into 59 of my nearest and dearest friends in Mexico, and then I had a reception in Dallas. I got Wonderful. Give them a round of applause. That's it. Thank you for coming. Our, our first round of questions involves your budget. And so the question is this. It's kind of twofold. They're actually threefold. Did you put together a budget for your wedding day? And so, how did you determine the budget and was it accurate? So we're going to ask Tiffany to answer first. I looked a lot of information online. I looked on the knot. I looked on Google, to be honest, and just kind of the type of wedding and the number of guests I was going to have, what the average budget was, and I kind of presented that to Shari, and she told me it was doable. So that was great. Uh, well, my parents donated a portion of funds to get towards the wedding, and being very little later in life, I, I put a bill for the rest of it. So, the initial plan was to basically come up with a ballpark idea of budget, and then as I went along, I kind of, this was my money. I was like, well, if I want to do it, I'm going to do it. If I don't, I don't. But I consulted with my door hanger, and she gave me kind of an outline. I guess we'll call it guidance um, rather than an actual budget. Good job, thank you. I have a similar a budget for my family, um, and what I wanted to share with you all is I was able to do both. There was something that my fiance and I wanted to do, which was to go away do something for ourselves, but our families had very different ideas of what our wedding would be like, and we were able to do both with the budget that they gave us, so, um, and then for special things, throw in our own funds. So. Randy, do you have anything to add? No. <laughs> Is what were your two top most priorities as you planned your wedding day, and did your budget reflect that? So we're going to ask Trisha to answer that. Uh, it's and food. <laughs> and yes, that was one of the majority of budget. Brandy? Uh, venue and food. Food was really important. Really nice food. Artsy food. Fun food. And it, Very cool. And it was everything that I wanted. <laughs> Great. Amy, anything? Okay. We're not going to ask every single one of them every question in the same time, so don't think 
for skipping the other words. Uh, the next section is vendor selection. So the question there is, what source did you trust most to find your vendors? Tiffany? My coordinator. I, I just I felt very comfortable with her, and I felt like she understood my style and my, what I wanted. And so I, I trusted her a lot. And I also had a couple of the notes from the news, so that was helpful too. Any research on the web? Or did you look those vendors up? Yeah, I did. I looked at their websites quite extensively. I, was, I really did my homework whenever she was in the list of vendors. So. How about you, Megan? Um, I rely a lot on the coordinator for that. Um, I, I researched what I could and made the best decision I could. Okay. So once you selected those vendors, what was your best means of correspondence with them? Amy? My situation is going to be that I don't have a job where I sit at a computer every day. And so it was really important to me that the vendors correspond with me by cell phone because I can't check email. Um, and I would say for vendors, that's a really frustrating thing when you're writing emails and says, this looks great, please give me a call tomorrow. And I would get home at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night and I would have a response to my email but not a phone call. My situation was really unique, but I needed someone to call me instead of course all by email. Um, and so if you're right asking you that, it's most helpful to they can't get to email during the day. Trisha? The new one that the Ryan Boyer and me uh, wanted everything via email, so I had him writing, talk, notebook, and uh, it, it seemed to work very well, especially those that are still more difficult to hold them on the phone. What did you do? I agree with Trisha that email was best for me because I could always print it out and put it in my little notebook and then I could go back and be like, oh, see, you said that, and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's really nice to have it in writing, so I didn't get confused because there's so many people contacting me about meetings and stuff like that. It's good for me to always have it right in front of my face. I could check it from any computer um, if I didn't write it in my planner right away. So. Right. Absolutely. Email. Did you have any vendors who did not want to communicate with you via email? What the name? I had one, their email went down, so I faxed the last time. <laughs> but that yeah, was it. Okay. If the vendor wanted to contact us back regardless or just a follow up or anything? Just like a follow up if you initiated a conversation. Well, nice care, never responded at all. Wow. I had a vendor whose website and email just completely went down and I didn't know it. So she kind of dropped off the face of the earth and that was kind of frightening. So what I mean, emails, 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 and all of a sudden I don't know how to get a hold of her. That was really scary. So I would appreciate a call and we asked to know that our communication would be changing and how to get a hold of her because she could give you that information up front. Okay. Now, when contacting the vendors, did anything turn you off during this process? Amy? I would say the biggest frustration is when there's uh, information on the website, for example, maximum capacity. And they say maximum capacity is X number of people. And then you coordinate, I am a working person, my mother works, you coordinate with the coordinator, you go to the facility, and they say, well, yes, our maximum is X, but truly to be comfortable, it's actually why, and that number is a lot smaller. So um, hidden, I guess agendas is the right word, just be upfront with your brides. If you don't have enough room, you don't have enough room. Or costs would be another one, where when you sit down in the facility, they give you information on what um, the, the costs are, and they put a proposal together for you, and the proposal actually has three or four different, well, there's a service charge for this. Well, you actually want your paid cut, there's a charge for that. Um, just be completely upfront with your rights 